Beyond the portal, the friends had found themselves in the first layer of hell. Four devils collected their weaponry and insisted on taking them to see the master. Warily, the party followed the hell spawn beyond a ruin and eventually to a great city. As they entered the city, they were beckoned away from their captors by a strange voice, a man called Saiken Romazi. As they would discover by way of a wanted poster for an assassination attempt against the devil Lo Lord Konarl. In exchange for assistance in finding the answers that Tess is seeking, Saiken tasked the party with procuring two weeks' worth of food, currency, and supplies, but for what purpose could he require such goods? Hello, my friends, and welcome back to New Delancia, our D&D 5th edition campaign. All right, everyone. So um, I know it's been a few weeks. I'm very happy to be back. I hope everybody is uh, having a great day. <clears throat> In the last session, uh, you guys had, uh, well, Ahara, who is... Uh, who is MIA, um, had just procured some armor and a, uh, and a disguise for his companion. The rest of you, uh, after learning a little bit more of your new tiefling friend, uh, have, uh, have gathered just outside, or, well, just inside the, um, well, a nearby bar in an attempt to procure some money and looking to, well, gamble. So, let me go ahead and get a change of scenery go. Hopefully that's showing up correctly on you guys' screens. I think that should have brought everybody over. Looks good on my end. Good here. All right. In fear and Tess. Uh, and Serene. Serene's actually here as well, but she is currently inside a bottle. Uh, they've tucked you into this bottle um, in order to use, uh, use you as sort of a gambling chip. Tess, in fear, you approach this table um, at which sits a couple of, a uh, pair of tiefling. Um, this is what they look like. One moment. Uh... So this is one. Here's the other. Well, it's good to see that they're practicing safe standards even in hell. Indeed. So, as you approach the table, um, the two seem to be uh, rolling a set of dice. And uh, as you approach, they look up at you, but uh, they don't say anything. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Give me a moment. You said that they were rolling dice? Yes, that's correct. They are rolling dice. <clears throat> oh, I see. Hold on. All right. Um, Tess is going to go ahead, and she's going to approach the table. Okay. And uh, give them a sly smile. 
Um, to the best of her ability. <laughs> and she will say, um, Greetings, friends. Um, what are we playing today? The, um, the one across the table from you, um, turns to look at you, raises a brow. What could you possibly want? Oh, to have a, to have a good time. To, uh, you know. Oh, gamble. Do you have a pretty good prize on hand? You might be interested. Oh, you've got my attention. Um, at this point, Tess will kind of not, not, not like pull out and like show off, but she'll kind of like flash Serene in a bottle from like underneath her cape to show show the the sparkly nature of the fairy in the bottle. And Serene will do like a little dance. Why would I want a lady in a bowl? Oh, she's capable of all kinds of magic you wouldn't believe. She can't magic her way out of a bowl. What the cork is for, silly. But if you're not interested, understandable. Yeah, exchanges a uh, glance with the tiefling across the table. The tiefling seems to be wearing a hood. Um, doesn't refuses to make any kind of eye contact or even any sort of acknowledgement of your presence at all. Otherwise, the uh, the tiefling that you're speaking with uh, maintains eye contact with you. All right. Sit down, then. As has a seat. <clears throat> you know how to play. Um, you might have to go over the rules. A bit hungover today. You understand. Do you, um... Let me see. Let me uh, take a look at your shoe. So... I was, um, so you think you've, uh, you think you've been, you, you've seen, um, children and, uh, and some other, uh, some other people that you've seen throughout your life playing this, this sort of dice game. Um, you've, you've seen people play it, but you've never actually played it yourself. Um, you're not one for gambling, so. Uh, he explains uh, this game is called Avandra's Favor. <laughs> and uh, anybody, and all of those out there who might have watched uh, Critical Role, um, I think would, would recognize this. So um, basically the way that it works is players roll 2d6. Um, and if these uh, dice add to either a 7 or a 12, um, that person wins. All right. Um, so he he puts down a purse of um, what seems to be currency. Looks a little light. He uh, gestures over uh, toward Ian Fear. Who's that in? Be one of mistress's servants. You're awful talkative for a servant. Oh, 
Oh, I allow him to uh to speak of his own will. He's uh he's my prized possession. He grimaces. Disgusting. Oh, he's quite smart if you actually let him talk. He can help me plan all sorts of things. And also can uh can help out with uh the finances. Almost like a financial advisor, if you will. Let me take a moment to divert uh, for just a moment. Misku. Hello. When you first arrived in this place uh, through the mirror, you were greeted by several of these devils who, uh, who started to lead everyone into this town. Um, well, this big city, actually. There was a ruin um, sort of on the way to this city uh, that you guys passed right by. Uh, seemed to be vacant from what you could tell, but once you got into town, um, everyone else seemed to break away from these, these captors that were leading you toward someone that they referred to as the master. Uh, but you didn't quite make it out in time. Uh, instead, kind of dodging into a back alley. You've laid low this entire time. Um, you haven't had any contact with anyone in the city. People have seen you, but um, your uh, being a tiefling has definitely helped with um, kind of blending into everything that's going on. Uh, you seem to be in a place that feels, um, well, actually kind of feels a lot like a place where you belong. Um, there are a lot of tiefling around and uh, a lot of very shifty looking characters. You feel very at home here uh, and that you, uh, you could potentially get, you know, whatever information you might need uh, from basically anybody. Um, At this point, uh, you are, uh, you find yourself kind of skulking through town uh, to sort of survey everything. You know, you've kind of been getting your lay of the land, uh, all of that. Um, and uh, this evening, uh, taking a stroll down the main uh, street here where all of the, uh, all of the shops and whatnot tend to be, uh, you find yourself outside of the bar where through a window, uh, you can make out what seems to be a pretty familiar figure. Oh, wait, do am I looking through here? Oh. Um, yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and move your character around freely at this point. Uh, just to give you a bit of um, context. Uh, so you are most definitely in the Nine Hells. <laughs> um, oh. Though you don't, you don't really know that much about the Nine Hells, just that you, through your blood, are, are interconnected with it. Um, Everything here uh, in the area is, um, <laughs> well, it's very ashen. Um, it's a very ashen place. Um, just about what you'd expect. Uh, this, the, uh, the realm itself is, uh, is very fiery. The sky kind of glows with an orange uh, sort of hue. And uh, every, like, there is smoke absolutely everywhere in the sky. Um, uh, it's very warm here, which, you know, suits your fancy just fine. Or suits you just fine. Peering through the window, uh, you see the figures of Tess and Ian Fear speaking to two tiefling. Um, and uh, Serene uh, sits upon a table, corked into a jar. Tess is sitting at the table, 
uh, and appears to be rolling dice with these fellows. All right, and do I have any of my gear on me, or was that taken at the gates? Uh, you don't have your gear, actually, no. Okay. Double checking. Um, so what, what exactly do I see? They said that I see them playing a game in there? That's correct. Okay. Um, let me peek around. They don't so, look like... The, their facial expressions don't... Um, They they don't seem to indicate that they are in any sort of danger at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's about all you can tell. Okay, I am going to... So everything seems fine inside. I think I'm just going to kind of post up out here and uh, watch from afar for a little bit. All right. Do I need to roll a stealth check for that or anything? Or... Um... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and roll a stealth check. Okay. If you don't want to be seen. Uh, the streets at this point are actually kind of barren. Um, you're not really sure why you would figure a town this size. They would be bustling all the time. Okay. Um. So yeah, let's say you're hidden. All right. And do I see anything else going on around the outside? Because it's I said it's pretty barren, but like there's like no activity, like even from the buildings around me or. Um, well, there are there are fires burning um, okay. inside the building to the northwest. Um, the building directly to your north um, seems to. Uh, well, it has fires burning on the outside, um, but you can't see anything on the inside. Uh, there don't appear to be any um, notable, like, windows or any other, uh, any other, I guess, access points that mm -hmm. you can tell. Um, uh, as you were strolling by, you did get a glance at the southwest building. Um, no fires are actually burning there. Uh, it looks like it may have been, uh, it, it looks like it sort of has fallen into disrepair a little bit. Okay. Also, can, are the people are, is can I tell if the people that are they're playing the game with are armed at all? Or oh yeah, they're armed. Okay. Tess actually is too. Um, Tess and Ianfir appear to have their gear. Uh, Ianfir is acting kind of strangely though. He's kind of um he's sort of huddled over. He's got a uh, he's got a cloak. Um, you can tell it's him, though. Um, you'd know that. Um, <laughs> you'd know that that stance anywhere. <laughs> See a little bit of like the flashy clothes underneath the cloak. Yeah, he kind of looks around sometimes. You've seen his face at least once, so <clears throat> you know it's him. Um, but yeah, he's wearing a cloak. He seems to be keeping his head down. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just gonna watch from here for right now and keep watch for anything outside. All right. So Tess, um, he pulls out these dice. Uh, and he says, all right, then let's play. Uh, so go ahead and roll 2d6. I rode six, you rode eight. Nobody wins this one. You, uh, care to up the ante a bit? Would you care to up the ante? That coin pouch looks a little light. I'll let you go first. Let you go first. Who's hmm. the first to make an offer? Go ahead and roll a... 
Go ahead and roll a charisma check. Or I'll let you roll. Hmm. I have a charisma check. Okay. Unless you have <laughs> something else you'd like to do in this situation, charisma check to try to persuade him. Persuasion would be the other thing, yeah. Do they still have persuasion? <laughs> they do. Is that still a oh, thing? Come oh, come on. <laughs> oh, I was going to do something to say in response, but yeah, right. no. Uh, this won't save that. No. I have uh I have inspiration so I can can uh try again or go That's for That's right. Persuasion. Yes, you can. That's correct. Yes. You you can uh you can spend a point of inspiration to reroll that dice. All right. Let me try to reroll it. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction, and I'm okay. going to do bend luck. Go ahead and roll that one d four. Um, is uh, what level spell is this? It's not a spell. This is a class ability. So oh, essentially, okay. what I do is I. Uh, I use two sorcery points uh, out of my pool, and then like I can apply this number as a bonus or a penalty to her. Uh, he is he is built for and, this. This is yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna, awesome. I'm gonna give her a bonus the three to her charisma. Okay, three to your charisma. Uh. Actually, this would be, uh, yeah, to the charisma check. So it would be uh, 9 to 12. Okay. I also, uh, can, can Tess also pick up Serene's bottle and... and use that as like a persuasion and be like, plus you wouldn't want to miss out on something like this. This looks just serene and like, like please do something fancy. Like, <laughs> show off how beautiful your little fairy is. All right. Serene does the most easy thing a fairy could possibly do and makes a little rainbow. And hopefully that will, because he's probably never seen a rainbow for right if to... he lives in hell well, I, I'm going to have to have you roll a performance check okay hmm I was going to say could I assist her uh, uh, surreptitiously using uh, my minor illusion cantrip okay what what's your idea here for your minor illusion? So maybe just creates uh, like some kind of uh, like basically it gives her a like a brighter like sort of aura around her. Okay, so you're gonna okay. I will. Uh, yeah, sure, you can do that. Uh, we'll call it a plus two, uh, which makes it a ten. Do I have to roll for persuasion at all? I'm like holding up the jar. No, you're fine. Um, no, he, uh, all right, have it your way. And then he say, uh, he points in front of him. Um, Why doesn't it? Why doesn't it list the <laughs> fucking name of this character on the character sheet? Oh my god! I just saw it. Right. Yeah. No, it's it's there. It just doesn't have it at the top for some reason. Okay. Um. So he points across the table. He says, "Rain, how about you, Din?" The um, the tiefling kind of. I um. I don't. I don't have anything left. Oh, it's fine. 
Yeah. He tosses the tiefling a little sack, jingles as, as uh, they catch it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll be in on this one. Rain rolls uh, 2d6. Ah, uh, I have an idea. And uh, he also rolls 2d6 and also rolls a 7. Um, so, uh, Ian Fear, what's I... your passive perception? My passive perception is 11. Tess, what's your passive perception? Can I tell where that is? That's just underneath our skills and stuff. What he skills? said, yeah. Okay. Twelve. <clears throat> okay. Tess, you're watching the dice as uh, this person rolls, or the, the, you know, leader tiefling kind of rolls these dice. And you notice that, like, he, so he rolls a two and a five to make seven. Uh, but you notice that, like, just before the, the number two die rolled over to two, it, like, stopped on, uh, on one of the other digits and then rolled over to two. I didn't catch which digit. Though. Well, I was going to see if it's possible to uh, react before the roll has settled. Sure, it's possible. I would like to use uh, press the digitation uh, to create a, a puff of wind to blow out into the uh, onto the dice and basically towards the area. Can you link your like... press to digitation, please? It should be in the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Uh, so, which role are you trying to affect? The uh, so you said it was a two and a five that I would have seen him roll. So they. This game so far has two sevens that have been rolled. One okay. from one from this person who apparently is named Rain, and then one from this person who have you you have not learned their name yet. All right. Uh, so I think I would try to. So I would probably try to force a, a re-roll on uh, this person. Uh, other dice. So it's so maybe before the two settle down, like the other dice also was sort of like dangling a little bit. Okay. Um, digitation. Let me take a look at this one. Um, so there is a verbal and a somatic component to prestidigitation. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to spend a sorcery point, and using my meta magic uh, skill, uh, I can cast uh, I can cast the spell without a somatic or verbal component. So okay, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, basically it's sort of like you see me uh, holding my hands tightly around my uh, my necklace, which has sort of been the focus of my thing. Uh, and uh, but I don't use any verbal skill. I just sort of like it looks like I'm tightening my hand around my necklace a little bit. Okay. Uh, so you do you uh, you do exactly what you state here. You cause him to re-roll the uh, which die would you like to? Um, I think it should be the. Five. Would you do both or? Well, I mean, I would try to do both, but I think. Based off the way you were describing it, the two would still stay, but... Uh, so it pushes the die over, and it, the new roll is a two. Um, 
when he sees this, you see his eyes widen for a minute. And then he sort of like glances at, at a Tess and then glances at you. This is just making hard eye contact with him. His eyes tighten. She smiles. Showing her teeth and everything. Ooh, look at that luck. Misku, you notice this uh, this gesture that this uh, this tiefling has just made. Uh, this guy's obviously cheating. Okay. You've seen that look a, th a, a hundred thousand times. With the lot that you that you fall in with mo more often than not. Maybe he's done that look at one point or another. <laughs> okay. Um, can I attempt to sneak inside at this point? You want to or... sneak in? Yeah. Yeah, you can attempt to sneak in. So do I have to, I have to roll again, or is my stealth check from before? Do you want to roll again? Um, I think I'm okay. <laughs> the door's... Okay. Yeah. You make your way inside. Beyond the door. You close it shut behind you. Uh, to leave it in the state that it was last uh, left. No one seems to notice you entering. And just to clarify, I, I saw that he was cheating, right? Or it probably... you didn't you did not see him cheat. You saw a look on his face that basically tells you that he's cheating like mm, you've okay. had a lot of experience with this sort of rabble like you have you have watched people gamble you have been part of gambling before like you you're pretty familiar with the game that that's being played here mm -hmm. there are a multitude of ways to cheat at it and this dude is definitely doing that yeah this def this dude is definitely cheating Okay. Just based on the fact that, like, the way he's looking around, the way that he keeps his arms tucked beneath the table. He's got a bunch of different tells, as it were. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm just going to... I'm just going to plop down on that empty seat. You're, you're going to plop down in what? Right there. All right. Yeah. Oh, go ahead and move. So Tess, suddenly Misku walks over. So Misku walks up to the empty chair, kicks it to spin it around, mm -hmm. and just sits down, crossing one of her legs over the top, arms folded. Ian Fear, Sam, Misku walks over, sits down at the table. Suddenly, you haven't seen them in... Well, all day. You haven't seen yeah, them. So uh, I think uh, when I see Misku sort of plop down, I'm going to sort of like make my way uh, slowly uh, over towards Misku uh, as if uh, basically I'm going to try to get behind Misku or, you know, to the side and behind Misku. Uh, and I will uh, try to give a look to say, you know, sort of, motion behind Misku, like to, as if I'm going to drop something to him. Okay. Uh, and you're trying to conceal the, the fact that you're doing this from, um, from, from the from two, the two yes. tiefling. You're trying to hand something to her? Yeah, I'm going to try to hand something uh, to Misku surreptitiously. Oh, hold on. I will let you roll a stealth check, a dexterity check. Um, I don't know if they have a sleight of hand check, but if that's a thing, that, that would also apply yeah. here. Okay. I'll, I'll let you roll any of those, whichever one you deem fit. Well, that Miscu had something to say. 
What's that? Oh, no, that's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll try a sleight of hand. Okay, sleight of hand it is. Go ahead and roll. Oof. Ooh. Ouch. Um. Uh, before do I really want to do this? I kind of. I don't need because I would need max points on this on the bend luck. Could so I see that that Yanfir is attempting this, correct? Well, yeah. Yeah, you yeah you, you definitely <laughs> seen him. <laughs> is there is there anything is there anything on the table? Drinks or like candles that are lit or anything like that? Oh yeah. Uh, there's the bo both of these uh, individuals have drinks sitting in front of them. Um, there's also the, the, the bottle with the fairy on the table. There's a, a sack of coin. There is, uh, uh, no candles, but, uh, yeah, that's about it actually. So <laughs> how chaotic, okay, hold on. On a scale of one to 10, how chaotic would it be if I broke Serene's bottle and then she just started wildly flying around the tavern and causing I a ruckus? I, I do have I do have a, a more low key option potentially. <laughs> what what's the low so, key option? Uh, I do have danger sense, which gives me a save on dexterity saving throws, which would be you have an uncanny sense when things nearby aren't as they should be. Could I use this to intercept Ian Fear's bad sleight of hand and roll my own sleight of hand to take it out of his hand before they can see it with advantage? Run that by me again. So I have I have danger sense. <laughs> Maybe link sense. the danger okay. sense in the chat. Yeah, so yeah can you link it? Danger sense. So you have advantage on dexterity people. saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps or spells. Uh, the rest of the description, I don't know. I would say yeah, you can. Yeah, cool. that works. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll advantage on a saving throw for dex okay. or for sleight of hand against that. Uh, actually, we'll just call it a dexterity saving throw in this case. Okay. But I kind of wanted to be a pixie like in Harry Potter in the second movie. <laughs> well, With all the pixies going point. flying around. That would have been um, funny. So with a critical, that is exactly how it plays out. Like, uh, he, he starts to sort of um, gesture to you that, that, you know, he's trying to to hand you something and you immediately scoop it out of his hand before he can uh, he can react you notice just as you do this that the uh, the tiefling sitting to your right uh, starts to look over um, at you and would have caught you but uh, he you are able to um, you're able to procure the thing uh, before he's able to notice it uh, he, so as he turns to you he says who the hell are you? Um, Misku just kind of shoots him a sideways, lazy glance. Like, she really doesn't care. And she jerks the thumb towards uh, the rest of the party going, I'm their bodyguard. Tess nods toward Misku, and, and she's like, Nice to see ya. Did you enjoy your break? So, um, so the thing Me that I'm going, that I'm uh, attempting to slide to Misku is going to be uh, the dagger, the the magic dagger I had. Okay. <laughs> In fear hands you a knife. <laughs> <laughs> a knife. Uh, a knife. Uh, so yeah, so so it'll be like you know, sort of like he lets it slip out of his sleeve, and then like Misku is like immediately seeing you know because. Ian Fear's done this before where he lets a dagger fall out of his sleeve when he's going to throw it or something and immediately catches it and like sleight of hands it back into you know yeah. to sneak it through yep. you, you now have a dagger you don't know much about this dagger but it's, it's just, a dagger yeah we, well the only thing we know for sure is that it's plus one from the uh, from the when we put it in the pool but, yep okay you have a dagger um Still locking eyes with you, um, Miscu, he says, Maybe I studded. Are you a 
Are you in? Oh, he's referring to like in the game. Like, am I being dealt in? Is that what he's trying to say? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's he he. Yeah, um, sure. Why not? I have nothing better to do right now. So it's customary if you are, you know, if you're gambling to throw a wager on the table. Like the dagger you just got? Or anything, really. Okay. But uh, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw my uh, ring of mind shielding, which I'm guessing didn't get taken off of me. Nope, it didn't. Only your cool. weapons did. I'm going to throw that ring of mind shielding that I have on on the table. You... You want to gamble with a worthless hunk of metal? This guy's being a real asshole, huh? Well, this is hell. <laughs> and he is cheating. <laughs> and he is cheating. So what what items were taken off of me, by the way? Uh, just your weapons. Did my... Uh... <laughs> Did my uh, gun from the future get taken off of me? Well, if you recall, when oh, maybe you weren't there for that session. Uh, when you, Let's... when you, yeah, when you guys came back, um, all of that like twisted into a into like a worthless hunk of metal, essentially. Like they formed these little like spheres of of like metal. Let me. Take a look real quick. I want to. Sorry, one second. No worries, You're take good. your time. Um, I guess I could th try throwing a couple of gold on the table and see if that's enough. I mean, how do I actually mean inventory? You're gonna throw a couple gold on the table? Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to. My character sheet's like, okay, there we go. I gotta go back to core. I keep forgetting the the core bio and spells tab are there. Um, think about this for a minute. You've been uh, you've been watching every you've been watching this this town for a few hours, um, at least at this point, uh, before you finally met back up with your friends. Um, you have seen a few people exchange money, and uh, it's never ever been gold. It's always been some other type of currency that you can't identify. Oh, okay, so then the gold would be useless. Uh, I will. Can I roll a persuasion check? See if I can convince him it's worth it. Um, convince him that the gold is worth it. No, 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 the ring that I have is worth it. Oh yeah, what are you gonna? What are you gonna say? I'm gonna say it's not about how it looks; it's about what it does. Okay, go ahead and roll it. Hmm. Rolling an eight. You broke us something. You're going to have to do better than that. All right. Misk is going to flip the ring back onto her finger and kind of just put her arms behind her head, kick her feet up on the table, and goes, if that's not good enough for you, then I'm not interested in your little game. I'm just here to watch. Uh, 
Have it your way then. I notice uh, you haven't rolled yet. <clears throat> uh, Tess stands up and she kind of like Captain Morgan like puts her her foot up on her chair. And then she says, um, right, right. Tess completely forgot about rolling. Apologies. And as she goes to roll her die, she kind of fumbles her hand on accident and then drops her dice on the floor. Go ahead and roll performance check. That is a performance check. Since I'm standing up, is it an advantage because the, the dice would kind of scatter as soon as they hit? Uh, actually, the performance check is so that he doesn't realize, he doesn't realize that you've I'm done this on it? purpose. Okay. Yes, correct. Oh, these dice hate you guys today. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> well, I was not looking think... forward to this today. I think the problem is, is we went with the wrong person who to uh, to do these kind of things. But yeah. I was the only tiefling available <laughs> at the time. So what you gonna yeah. do, Miski? You watch her like drop these things on the floor. <laughs> Come on, rookie. Yeah, this is this is this is some obvious like rookie stuff that's going on here, and he. He he actually stands up out of his chair. He puts his hands on the table. Look, if you guys are going to waste my time. He begins. Um, Tess thinks you misunderstand. That was pure accident. Mind if I borrow your dice? You dropped those dice on the floor and I saw it. What are you trying to pull? What are you trying to pull? I'm not pulling anything. You just drop your dice on the floor. I'd be a little drunk. Rain stands up as well. They both are looking at you. They, uh, Rain seems to have their hand on what looks to be a weapon inside their cloak. I think I'm going to look to this and be like, uh, I'm going to uh, look to both Tess and Missy for a second, and then I'll say, like, uh, in the in the slow serve voice, uh, this perhaps we should calm this situation down a bit. And as I'm doing this, uh, I will attempt to cast uh, charm person uh, on uh, the this leader fellow here. Okay, charm person. And depending on how well this goes, I might have a deception uh, attempt. Actually, you know what? What's that? I will do this at second level, so I can charm both of them. Okay. So they each have to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, oof! Oof! <laughs> well, well, one of them is friendly, uh, friendlier to us. The other is not. Can I roll to attempt a uh, deception on the one that didn't work on? Um, this is a spell that I'm attempting. Yes, so what happens is um, you see these uh, these two stand up. The, uh, the main um, kind of leader uh, looks to be heated. The second one starts to motion toward uh, their weapon or what you perceive to be a weapon uh, that may be concealed beyond their cloak, but um, then sort of just calms down after Ian Fear does a thing. Um, 
Pete. Ian Fear, this has both a verbal and somatic. Are you also using your ability here? I think uh, so. Yeah, I'm going to use um, your meta magic. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's going to take uh, the verbal component away. Uh, I guess it'll look a little bit like a gesture of some sort, but I mean, I guess I'm hoping at this point that he doesn't. Well, I mean, he, do I he guess doesn't the notice. Other... He doesn't notice. You're, yeah. He's too fixed on Tess uh, right now, and so is the other person. Uh, so is Rain. So uh, he doesn't notice. Um, all of a sudden, his companion kind of calms down and like, um, like removes now... hand from weapon, but doesn't say anything. Um, on the other hand, he looks pretty pissed off. Miska, you were about to take an action. So I'm going to roll for deception. Uh, without getting from my, up from my seat, just want to look at him like he's overreacting and basically conv convince, uh, convince him that Tess is not only a rookie gambler, but just generally clumsy. How are you going to do that? Uh, I was going to roll for deception. Right, but what do you oh, say? So he's getting up and freaking out, and uh, um, I'll basically tell him, like, look, she's brand new to this kind of stuff, and I'm uh, on pins and needles right now. Just take it, just chill him out, man. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, let's go ahead and roll that deception check. He, uh, he turns to look at you, raises an eyebrow, and then sits back down. It's just my luck to be gambling with a rookie today. Uh, well, roll your dice. It's actually AFK at the moment, so let's... um. Maybe I'll be like... I was going to say, maybe I'll be like, uh, let me get your dice for you, mistress, and then I'll pick them up for her, and then... A very strange behavior <laughs> from, the, uh, from the sorcerer. So, one moment, guys. We'll be right back. Don't touch.
Sorry about that. We're back. Right. So Ian Fear picks up your dice and hands them to you and says, um, what, what was it, Ian Fear? I shall get these for you, my lady. Oh, thank you, my kind investor. <sighs> Just rolled a dice already. She rolls a three. I don't. So, um, well, I'll just, I'll let you think about that. Any actions here? Uh, I rolled sure my dice. Can... There's nothing really that I can do here. Huh. Rookie, huh? All right, then. It would seem my dice are not as skilled as yours. Oh, Rain. It looks like you win. Rain um, pulls all of the uh, all of the gold and everything, uh, including the jar, over to them. Well, you have anything to, else to gamble with? Tess looks at in fear. We have jewelry. Oh? And then uh, reach into the pocket. Uh, well, reach into sort of the cloak. And from one of the pockets pulls out a... Let me see, where is it? Uh, pulls out an emerald. Now, wait a damn minute. You mean to tell me you have a slave who you allow to talk and carry your valuables? That don't seem like no slave of me. I did refer to him as his investor. Tess does this for fun. Tess has plenty, plenty of treasures. Tess can let slaves hold on to gems. He knows that uh, they're they're loyal. Roll a persuasion check. You were just struggling so hard with criminal behavior. <laughs> uh, all right. I have two points left. Uh, yeah, I'll use those last two points on Ben Luck. All right, Ben Luck. 1d4. Go ahead and roll it. That is a 14. Nice roll. Well. How you treat your slaves is none of my business, I wager, but... Is that it? You've got an Earth Jewel. <laughs> From the surface. The... You're gonna have to do better than that, mate. You certainly didn't do better yourself. <laughs> Beasley pouch of, uh, currency. Well... Nothing else I besides that, really? You haven't given it... me any, any urge to really offer more? 
What do you well, have? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and let's say... I was going to say, uh, while they're talking, uh, so I'm going to do this uh, as an uh, as an aside, by the way, like this is from one of my abilities. Okay. Uh, but just know that I'm... Uh, so from this flexible casting, basically I'm going to use one of my spell slots uh, in order to gain sorcery points. So I'm going to... It basically prevents me from casting uh so like say i have a certain number of spells at each spell slot so i'm using one of those spell slots uh spells uh it, to gain me sorcery points so i'm going to use a yeah. uh, third level spell slot to gain five spell point or sorcery points okay cool you have five sorcery points go on there, was right. there something else no, so that's that's why I was just going to let you know that I'm going to be using this while... Oh, uh, yes, understood. He, um... So once again, he, he sort of cracks this grin. Oh, I can hold, lady. He pulls out yet another sack of coins and lays them on the table. Now, you're going to have to do better than a what's this glass thing hold it emerald right surface money Ugh. where do you find him who's he referring to me. He looks at you, he points at Ian Fear, he says, where you find him? That's none of your, uh, beeswax. Bees what? Oh, you uh. wouldn't understand. You seem to be spending too much time on the surface. I didn't hear the last part of what you said. <laughs> It's not important. He puts down his mug. He mumbled something under his breath at you. It was okay. probably something like derogatory aimed at you. Well, are you, are you in? <laughs> I've been in. Are you going to do better than some piece of glass? Because if not, then we take the lot and we leave. Um, I do have some sapphire gems on me that I can uh, throw in. All right. Sapphire gems or whatever. More pieces of glass from the surface. However, um going to use the same set of dice this time or I'm going to need you to explain to me why I can't use your dice you could use my dice if you want shouldn't be a problem we all use the same set of dice hmm. thank you you may have misunderstood, Tess. Most people that walk in here have their own dice. Interesting, though, that you want to use mine. Even though yours seem to be perfectly functional. Well, let's just say that it's all part of the fun. That's maybe fine by Ian, me. I was going to say, I think maybe Ian would sort of look towards the, uh, the other fellow, uh, noticing that Perhaps he's a little bit calmer than his friend. So you're like, would you agree the di same dice for everyone would be fair? That works for me. He kind of... Actually, go ahead and roll a perception check, Ian Fear. Yeah, he kind of snickers. So, like, this dude's up to something, man. 
You just, you don't know what it is, no, but it's uh, obviously sorry. not loaded dice. What I was going to say is uh, talking to the other person, the one who I have charmed, to sort oh. of get him to sort of, to, to agree with us. Hess also still has of, her ring like, of kind truth of telling on as well. So is there anything I can do with uh, using that to coerce our friend into revealing what's going on? Ring of truth telling? Um, let me see what that does again. Um, so essentially, if you roll a wisdom save, um, there is a DC for you to discern any lie. So would you like to roll a wisdom save? And if so, what, what kind of lie or which lie are you trying to discern here? Where do you think he's lying? And I well, where do you think he's lying? No rush. Take your time. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. And, you know, feel free to deliberate with your um, companions in the meta. That's fine. Probably in the... I don't have a problem with you using my dice. Okay. Go ahead and roll it. What was this again? A wisdom save? Yeah, this is a wisdom save. Can I do what with the Ring of Truth telling? Uh, so this is going to give you an... Um, this is going to give you advantage. So go ahead and roll it one more time. Advantage. Yeah, sorry. Just roll it normal. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and keep the 18. That's fine. Yeah, he's full of shit. He actually does have a problem with you using his dice. Yeah, okay. Um, seems to be worried about something, in fact. Okay, figured as much. Oh, if we uh, if we all agree to use the same dice, I can uh, I can throw my my friend in fear into the offer. As I said, he's quite good with investing. Investing, eh? He kind of looks you in fear up and down. You'd be surprised with um, riches. This one can help you get. Hmm. To roll persuasion. All right, then. East pieces of glass. Plus your friend here. I'll double me own ante. And he puts out another thing of uh, currency. Everyone using the same dice. Or dice. All of us. Right. My dice. Fair and square. I'll go first. Yeah, he rolls a seven. Five and two. Weird. Uh... Hmm. And these are with whose uh... dice? Yeah, he rolls a seven. Five and two. Seven, lucky number. Isn't it? Well, I'm lucky. You're not. Roll the dice. Rain rolls. Looks down, sees 
a three and a one, looks back up, doesn't seem to make any kind of gesture or anything. Well. I wonder. A six, isn't it? Best two that out makes of three. Me the winner. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me see. Oh, no, I guess this wouldn't really... It would be kind of interesting. Could I use the Ben Luck skill on this? Yes, you could. <laughs> yes, you Yeah, can. you know what? I, I think I will go ahead and use Ben Luck uh, to, to give her... All right. Or to... Well, actually, hmm. Well, let roll me it. see. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> or I guess I could have applied it to his. But... You, yeah, you could do that too. Oh my god! Yeah, I'll give her a bonus one on there. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Like, one of your one of your dice flip, and uh, and all of a sudden you have a seven. Lucky seven. Well. Lucky, isn't it? Isn't that lucky? <laughs> isn't it? And how might that happen? Or dice. Tell Tess. Charisma check. Deception or deception. Uh, I'll let you roll a, a charisma, deception, or performance. Whichever one you choose. Bill check. Yeah, char uh, charisma, deception, or performance. A any one of those three. Uh, un unless you have another way you'd like to do that. Like, I don't know. I don't. I doubt the dexterity check would be very good here. <laughs> you can roll intimidation no, check. Not. You could, yeah, you could. Roll a deception. 13 deception? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Well, we're still rolling for the, uh, for the tie, aren't we? Seems we are. Uh, so the first thing he's going to do... God damn. Wow. Jesus. That's like three straight 20s. Once again, he rolls a two and a five, making seven. Would it be possible it's... to use the press the digitation effect again? Yes. On so he uh so to cause uh a puff of wind to show up again, and this time, you know, blow at the dice? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Also, um, what's that? Is there any? Is there anything I can roll to detect or understand what he's doing to cheat the dice, having a criminal background myself? Yes. Um, what do you want to do? Are you trying to, like, kind of watch him, or...? I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to look for, like... Look for look to understand the gimmick to what he's doing. Okay, roll a perception check. Hold on, I have a question. Does Serene have like any kind of magic that she can use to like help out with like flipping dice or anything like that? Like in her I kit. <laughs> does Does Serene have that? Because like she's her? in the bottle, but we loosely corked it. I remember last time to make sure that she can get out just in case things go wrong. And just because she's in a bottle doesn't mean she can't cast magic. Like yeah. that's. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything like, like that? Any sort of like cantrips or anything that can, you know. Also, for rolling on this with the subject matter, would I gain advantage on this roll by any chance? With what? The with subject the, matter. The subject matter, right? Because it's it's involving like criminal activity. No. Okay. This is gambling. 14 on perception. You kind of feel like he's rolling weird, but that's about all you can discern. Like, I don't know. There's something off about the way that he rolls his dice. 
Mm. Is there anything on the table around us? Uh, there are two drinks on the table. There's a, a bottle of fairy. There's a <laughs> few sacks there's... of of hmm. some kind of a currency. And a there's an emerald glasses. and three uh three sapphire on the table. Who who has drinks right now? Looks like the uh the leader, um, Tiefling and Rain do. Okay. Um Rain's the one that's that's more passive right now, right? That's correct, yes. Alright. I have let me let down of this room, but I do have an idea. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Um, I'd like to reach over and uh, just straight up drink Rain's drink until it's empty. Weird flex. <laughs> You're okay. You uh, right. I'm going. You reach over and you grab Rain's drink. Rain actually doesn't seem to care at all. Uh, Rain continues to stare dead into um into the uh, the the other tiefling, um, and doesn't even kind of like n care. That that happened, like doesn't even make eye contact you with you or acknowledge you or anything. Okay. Uh, the other tiefling, on the other hand, does look over at you and he kind of raises his eyebrow. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna roll intimidation for the next line if that's all right. All right. And uh, what I want Misku to say is basically uh, balancing the cup on a finger, or just kind of like twirling it around in her hand, saying that uh, you know, on the surface where the real gamblers are, they'll roll with cups to prevent cheating. So if no one here is cheating, I don't see what the issue adding this to the mix would be. And I'd like to say that verbally, in the most nonchalant tone, but in my eyes, I want to be shooting murder glares at him when I intimidate. Okay. Go ahead and roll your intimidation. That's a 20. Noise. So, you're from the surface. That's a bit interesting, isn't it? I get around. Fine. We use cups. And so Misku will show him exactly the technique. You just, she'll take the cup, take the dice in one hand, throw the dice in the cup, shake it, and pour it out onto the table. Sorry, so you slam the cup face down onto the table. You don't roll it out of the cup. I know how to roll dice. And furthermore, you're not even in the game. So who's cheating now? Kind of like, puffs up a little bit um obviously intimidated and obviously scared tess um, looks like visibly confused and she's like we weren't counting her role she was just showing and misku again rolls her eyes and says as i told you she's a novice as if to say explaining the rules to her because she's still new to this she has money and you've got a mouth on you. Are you betting? I've also got a blade. And Misku is just not. Just not. <laughs> just waves it off. Right then. Shall we get back to our game? With cups then. He kind of looks directly at you, like, makes eye contact you when he says this, and he kind of, like, narrows his, his eyes at you. Now, 
what are you putting down? He pulls out yet another sack of currency. Wait, I thought this was a tiebreaker. Oh, yeah, that was a tiebreaker, wasn't it? Okay, right on. So here we go. He rolls. This time it's two fours and nothing seems to happen. That's uh, fucking Yahtzee's the dice in the cup and fucking puts the <laughs> cup upside down on the table and then lifts it. Oh? Oh? Nine, another popular number. You have to roll again. Again. We're rolling until somebody gets either a 7 or a 12. You know what? That's it. I'm going to go ahead seven. and uh, hold on. I was going to say, I want to go ahead and try this bend luck thing one more time on her 10. <laughs> okay. 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 This would be Come against on. the six. So. Right. If you roll a two, that's going to be crazy. <laughs> I actually I didn't I don't see that roll for some reason but I assume it was a 2. It's a 2. I don't see the roll. Give either. me a second to give me a second to load back in apparently. There it is. <laughs> It was actually a two. Wow. Um, so yeah, you actually do roll a uh, you do roll a twelve. He stands up at the table. As hops up and cheers really loudly. I know you're cheating. I don't know how you're doing it, but I know you are. How do you know something that you don't know how? Because nobody has that kind of luck. Because you know how you don't oh, know on. you don't know how you know you know that I'm cheating. <laughs> that is such a test thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and Misku will point out, well, it's only weird that we started winning once the cup came into play. Uh, I suppose I go, Mistress. It may be perhaps he is a sore loser. And then look to his friend, and then look to his the other friend, the silent one. Perhaps you should get your friend away before he causes himself some more trouble. Up to the and winner he... goes the spoils. Come on, lady and gentlemen. See, he actually draws out his weapon and says, how about this? We take all the spoils, and you turn around and leave. Can I roll to intimidate again? Yes, you can. That's why I was going to say, because, like, his friend should still be charmed to be our friend. Dorian, do you have any way of creating any friend. kind of, like, smoke bomb or any kind of effect like that on the side? I have... You have a way of, like, flooding not, the room. Not a smoke bomb. I have those dancing lights. I have a minor illusion. Minor illusion might work. I think that's minor what illusion that might work. That creates um, something without uh, an actual 
uh, sensory sensation on it. Here, let me... Yeah, but if you move through it, it won't work. Like, it'll dissipate. So probably not that. Yeah, okay. You can, yeah, you can create an image of an object. Okay. But that's why I was like, I was saying, uh, when I was saying, you know, perhaps get your friend away from here before he causes more trouble, like, since his friend should still be under the uh, charm person to sort of encourage him to maybe, you know, back his friend away from the fight. And then Miski was going to roll for intimidation. Yeah, the other the other tiefling doesn't seem to do anything. Um, they just kind of sit there. No, no hands on weapons, just kind of sitting there still. Hmm. Okay. So what he is doing, he's reaching for his weapon. Well, Miski uh, Mis was going to try to intimidate. What is Miski doing? Yeah, I was, oh, uh, he rolled a nine. Oh, well, uh, Miski rolled a nine. Um, and I was gonna you? Uh, I was gonna say, you know, from one from one gambler to another, nothing hurts your chances at more games than a bad reputation in town. So maybe you should cut your losses now, or this will be the last game anyone will play with you. Still holding his weapon, it says nothing hurts your chances of playing more games than being dead, doesn't it? Ooh, you know what's worse than a sore loser? A murderer. No one wants to gamble with a murderer. You're not even armed. Okay, so I think at this point, uh, I think Ian Fierce had enough, and he sort of like, the hood comes down a little bit, and he, or, no, you know what? Instead, like, you'll see him sort of like look up, still hooded, and then like raise a hand, and then like using the, uh, using the prestidigitation, uh, create like a uh, sort of like the swirling vortex of energy within his hand and say, Perhaps don't press your luck. Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll an intimidation check. Can I perhaps make this persuasion? A persuasion check? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll let you do that. Even with a plus seven. And if this doesn't calm down, I have an idea. What was the what was the roll? I didn't see it. Ah, it there it is, twelve. Be... Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and roll an opposing wisdom check. That's a success, actually. Um, <sighs> he sits down. Plops down in his chair. Fine. You can tell that, like, he he looks a little guilty. Like, he knows, like, he was cheating the whole time. And the cut thing is actually what wind up got, wound up getting him. And then, like, and then after he sits down, like, you see the, uh, sort of, he ends the cantrip. And so the thing just sort of, like, fizzles out, but, like, with a little tiny spark at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Fine. Ask, uh, take collects her spoils. Take your spoils and get out my bar before I end your fucking life. Oh, Misku's gonna gonna grab some of the coin out of one of the bags, flip it onto the table, and just be like, for the drink. <laughs> nice touch. All right. So you have all of your spoils back in your possession. Uh, and you're now, um, well, you're now at least three sacks of some manner of coin. Maybe coin? Richer. <laughs> whatever sacks of the, whatever they use for money, that's what we have. Yep. You haven't opened them yet, but there are some sacks. They have some kind of something in them. I think it wouldn't hurt to, uh, once we get outside, take a look through the sacks and see well, what's I actually mean, going on inside. I, th I thought, didn't Misku uh, open one of them in order to lay some coin down, as they said, for the drink? 
Oh, let's go All ahead right. and inspect the other two before we exit the bar. This could be a solo yeah, round gonna... at the bottom. Are you guys going to start making your way out? What are you doing here? Yeah, um, as Tess is walking toward the door, she's going to take a look in the other bags. Uh, inside these bags seem to be a small crystalline um, sort of small... They do definitely look like currency. Uh, Misku, as you're looking... At, w actually, as you pull one out and lay it on the table, um, I guess that's kind of the first look that you get at these things. So they're... Uh, you've seen these before, Misku, because you've been watching people in the town, but they seem to be paying with these little crystalline... They're blue. They're like light blue in color. Um, or actually, I'm sorry. They're like kind of an ashen uh, color. Like they were, they were blue at some point and they've, they've like, you know, they kind of have been tainted by this like cloudy darkness and they, um, well, they're sort of tear shaped actually. Neat. And so the bags are literally just filled with that? There's nothing else in them? They all look no. the same. Yeah, they all look the same. That's that's it. There's just a few bags with these things in them. You'd probably say there's about 150. Okay. Huh. Fair enough. Strange he'd, he'd go so far to cheat and then ante up just real money. They're small. They actually, they actually kind of look like little tears. So you guys are, are doing what? Making your way out? Okay. Uh, so you guys make your way outside the bar. Yeah. But Tess, something that strikes you as being a bit odd is that uh, Ahara hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, Tess says, uh, like, looking up at the, the rooftops, seeing if she can spot Ahara. She kind of says under her breath, I haven't seen Ahara. Uh, he was supposed to be our backup plan. Thank goodness Misku came just in time. Yeah, I haven't seen, haven't seen sight of him. I just kind of wandered around for a while. Hopefully these bags of um, she peeks inside again. Ears, um, can help us get some uh food. Food we needed, correct? Yeah, thinking back, you um, you definitely needed some um, what was it? Food, um. He was requesting of you. There was also like just supplies uh, for two uh, two weeks worth of supplies and some currency. So you've you've come across currency. You don't really have any idea how much currency it is. Uh, Tess kind of uh, sheepish sheepishly laughs and she hands over the bags to uh, her investor, Ian Fear. Do you mind holding on to these for Tess? <laughs> And then, you know, and then since we're now outside, just sort of like nod and then just like slowly bring his head down to or up to a, a Tess's face and go, you know it, baby. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> uh, Ian, fear these. Um, let me see. Yeah, these, these sacks of. Uh, uh, of gems are unlike anything you've ever seen before. Um, they're definitely <laughs> otherworldly, uh, as it were. Uh, but you you find it very strange that a gem this small could be cut and polished. Like they're they are literally the size of a teardrop. I guess then I would so almost sort of like scoop my hand and it is sort of like feel them. You feel them? Uh, they feel like gems. They're very, very small gems. And I mean, I guess like, so I guess these things, 
they, I mean, I guess enough of them would probably be heavy, but I guess these things should be pretty light then. Yeah, they are pretty light. Um, heavier than you'd expect, but still pretty light. Perhaps we should check in with Saiken to determine the market value of what we have to see if we can pick up enough supplies with what we have, like, on hand. I would not trust Saiken to throw him. I say we keep observing the locals, see how they spend their currency on the things, especially on food. Do that if we can find a, a market nearby. Any hell farmer's markets down here? Tess, you're looking around and you actually do see a sign um, that has um, that has some writing on it in... Uh, let me see, what languages do you know, actually? What languages do you all know? Um, I know... <coughs> no, Infernal and Dwarvish and Common. I know. Where do we have Common? this listed at again? Uh, this would be on the front side. This would be at the near the bottom of the uh, left side of the sheet. Uh, so I know common, elvish, and undercommon. Um, common, elvish, and undercommon. But uh, if need be, I also can do comprehend languages. Okay. Tess, what did you know again? Infernal, dwarvish, and common. And miscu? I'm still having trouble finding this for some reason. Uh, so underneath the uh, ability checks and stuff, uh, and then underneath passive percep passive wisdom perception, if you go all the way on the bottom on that side, uh, uh, you'll see other proficiency in languages. I think I accidentally forgot to uh, add that, but if I remember correctly, all I know is common and infernal. Yeah, no, I'm looking at common and infernal. That's all you've got. Oh, no, there um, it is. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, okay, so yeah, language is actually an infernal. Um, and uh, seems to denote a general store. Um, that's right here. Okay. There's also a sign here that um, that seems to be sort of scratched out, uh, and a sign here that says warehouse. This goes to the general store. Okay, you want to go into the general store? Yeah, just peek around at the, the prices and see if I can see how people are paying. Okay. Uh, so, as you walk up to the general store, the door is shut. Um, but as you turn the handle, uh, the door creaks open, and you walk in. Is everyone else going in as well? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let me go ahead and drag you guys in. You guys enter into this store. The uh, walls of this store, much like all the all the other buildings in the Nine Hells that you have come across in this city, are made of the same very darkened, um, almost charcoal black stone. Um, stones are are very big. They sort of cobble together into a into a structure. Uh, as you walk in, there are shelves. Uh, on your right and uh, to your left, and uh, there is there appears to be someone um, sort of meddling about just around the corner. Their price is clearly labeled on any messages around here. Oh, don't seem to be no. It all is in the general store. Are there food items? Well, there seem to be various food items. There are. Um, you know, some other uh, different things, supplies. You see, uh, you actually see some like rope. There's uh, there's like flour and um, there are all sorts of uh, like different vials of things. Um, there are, uh, you see all sorts of things here. They're, like the shelves are just lined with uh, with various goods. Um, but yes, food, uh, food among them. I guess we should uh should find find the price on at least something and figure out use that as a frame of comparison for the base value of money here. As far as food goes, are there any kind of like uh rations or like non perishable items on the shelves? 
Um, oh yeah, there's uh, there are definitely like some dried like rations and things like that. There are also uh, things like uh, you also see things like ingredients to make food, like you know um, various like dried meats. There are like there's like flour things like that. There are no like there actually are no um, what what's the term? Um, there actually are no like um, perishables. Yeah, there are no perishables in here. It's only non-perishable items. So it's like, you know, if, if there is food, it's like stuff that's that has a very long shelf life. It's not like, you know, meat. Um, uh, unless gonna, it's like dried and I a, packaged. I have a question about the rations. Uh, would I know if, so, because we've been having surface rations for so long, but are the rations here any different than the rations on the surface? Um, They seem to be like of different like they're different meats they're not like you know your usual stuff they're still edible for sure so i'm um, gonna i was gonna say i'm gonna like lean in close to tess and say let misku take a bag buy something first so we can see what they cost sounds like a good plan and then uh um uh, so ian will then look back towards uh misku like nod him forward and then hand a bag out to him, like holding a bag out of the of the the, the currency. And Miss Good is grabbed without thinking about it. Uh, what all do I see in the store? There's all sorts of different items. There awesome. there are various like supplies. Um, yeah, you, you think you see like a grappling hook <laughs> hanging out? There's like lantern and and what you assume to be like oil. Uh, there are, there's like rope, uh, oh gosh, all sorts of things, um, on the shelves here. Uh, but there are various shelves, uh, particularly along the right hand side wall here that have various foodstuffs that are non-perishable items. Again, no meats, it's like dried stuff, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Misku's going to grab a... I mean, you handed me a sack of money and you mentioned grappling hook. I'm not leaving here without a grappling hook. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab a rope, a grappling hook, and grab some food a water. Too. Oh, yeah. Um, let's say, like... Tess, Ian Fear, you, you guys recall that the goal here was to procure some currency, a week, uh, two weeks' worth of rations, and two weeks' worth of supplies. Just to uh, reiterate that. Okay. Um, and this is enough to feed how many of us? Just the people in our party right now, or? You don't know. You, okay. you actually don't know about that first part either. They haven't told you about that. Um, I guess I'm just going to buy, like, 30 rations. Okay. And, man... Supplies is pretty vague, because Misku pretty much will sleep on the ground if you let her. Um, so that's what I'm buying. <laughs> Just so we can figure out the money situation. Okay. So I'm going to bring all this up to the, uh, to the counter, and also going to say that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for an itemized receipt. Go ahead and move yourself that. to the counter. Man, do they print itemized receipts in hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as you walk up, um, this is the person that you see. Oh, hello. Grandma? <laughs> well, I haven't seen you around here. Uh, she is an elderly lady and um she wears a staff on her back and next to her is a little quaset uh who looks like this oh Aww. that thing that thing definitely eats out of the trash Narf. it's din <laughs> She turns to the little quaisit and says, Narf, say hello to the new person. 
Ai! <laughs> I'm glad that came out because I just want to never go, NARF! <laughs> Is this it? Yes, that, that's going to be it for now. Hmm, let's see. And you said this was what, like 30 units of rations or uh, 30 days worth of, or 30 weeks worth of rations, was it? I don't know, 30 rations. Okay, um, let's call that, that's like, let's call that that's three weeks some... worth of rations. What's up? Yeah, no, never mind, go ahead. Yeah, let's call that three weeks worth of rations. Um, so three weeks rations and what else? Uh, a length of rope and a grappling hook. Okay, so you've got a length of hemp and rope, and you've got a um this grappling hook that was that was hanging out there. Ah, is this it then? Anything else you need to find? That that's gonna be it for right now. Hmm. Didn't you, uh, did you come in by yourself? I could have sworn I heard talking. Kind of looking around. Hmm? Oh. You, uh, yes. Are, are you all together, then? She's speaking loudly, um, obviously. Tess, to you. Tess looks at the, uh, the shopkeeper and says, um, Oh, no, um, no, I'm separate. I'm, I'm, Tess is just browsing. And your companion, um, are you a, uh, is your companion a surface dweller? I belong to mistress. Um, no surface dwellers in my store. You'll have to wait outside. Tess nods her head and says, oh, um, understood. Sorry. That's racist. She, she motions for a, she like starts heading toward the door and pushing Inferior out along the way. <laughs> Inferior, are you, are you, are you going to willingly be pushed out of the store? <laughs> she's gently, she's gently pushing on his back. All right, uh... Yeah, I suppose uh, you'll see him like like slowly start moving out. <laughs> Sad Charlie or, Brown no, music plays. I was gonna say instead of uh instead of having her push me out because the whole goal was to see sort of like how much this stuff costs. Like if she doesn't give the itemized receipt, like I I would say, madam, your purse, and you know hand her the two bags of uh of currency left as I head outside. We should be able to get a total through Miscue, though. For everything. Yeah, should, should be able to. She yeah. was asking if you were okay or if you needed anything. Um, and that's when she realized that your partner was a human. Or, yeah, uh, well, Tess is going to go ahead and exit the store because she's assuming that uh, Miscue has everything handled. Yes, that'll be 50 tears, if you please. As Tess okay. hears that on the way out, she's like, oh. I have a good bit of money. Miscu, right. in the time that you have spent watching people pay for things, you have very rarely seen anyone spend 50 tears on anything. Um, usually these things go in like, you know, kind of small handfuls. Not, not an entire coin purse of uh, of these I'm going to hand her five of them and see how she reacts. This is five. I said 50. What do you... Are You, you wouldn't try to pull one over on an elderly lady. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm out of sorts. One second. Let me look at... Okay. Uh, Although this is, you know, this is a bit more than you see in the normal exchange, but like you've you've seen that like uh, you you'd probably estimate if you had to the uh, the stuff here to be worth a bit less than that. 
be a she's bit She's obviously less... trying to gouge you a little. Oh, okay. Um... Let's see. Got any negotiating skills? That's what I'm trying to look through right now. Donks. I don't want to intimidate the little old lady. Yeah, haggle I with her. Like she that. looks like she can handle herself. Okay. She's not just any little old lady. She's a little old lady from Pasadena. She's uh, a little old lady from the Nine Hells. Of right. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for an intimidation, uh, stating that uh, I'm purchasing this as supplies from my employer, and that's not negotiable. These are the funds given for given for the uh, supplies I'm picking up. She rolls her eyes. <sighs> Is it Psyken again? Ms. Kudis. No, I, yeah, I Ms. no Kudis idea kinda, who that is. Uh, Ms. Kudis kind of blankly stares and uh, shrugs going, uh, not really into names in this business. Hmm. Ah, uh, very well. I, uh, I suppose I can part with this stuff for, say, 30 tiers. But that is the best I will do. All right, and I'm going to need a write-up for ever a seat for the employer, you know. Of course. And then I, uh, I guess I'm giving handing over 30 tiers. She pens out a receipt in duplicate, um, slaps one into the book that's sitting to her right, and hands you one, and inventory, you know. Inventory! <laughs> <laughs> no, not now. The Quasit proceeds to uh, head into the back room. <sighs> Here we go again. <laughs> well, if there's nothing else I can do for you, then please see yourself out. Miss Koo kind of walks out. Goodbye. Kind of, kind of at a loss for words, holding up a sack and a receipt, going, "I, I think I, think I think I got the stuff we need." You're you're heading outside now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Miss comes out with some uh, various supplies and. That's actually all the time that we've got for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of New Delancia, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition campaign. We will see you all next week uh, with episode 30, actually. I think it's episode 30, is it not? Yeah, episode 30 will be next week. Uh, so we'll see you then, same time, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central. Um, you know, day after uh, Deep Space Transmissions, uh, as always, uh, this is VG Punks and Friends, and we're signing off. Keep a song in your heart.